It's hard to believe that Pokemon X and Y is almost here. I mean, there's less than a month to go, yet Game Freak is still surprising us with new Pokemon, new systems, and a better idea of what X and Y will be like. And with the release of the latest trailer, you just knew that we'd have to put the old analysis machine back to work once again. And to do so, we've of course again enlisted the help of our resident Pokemon master, Derek Bittner. But please make sure to check out our previous analysis videos if you haven't already, as we'll be covering only the new stuff here. You can find links to them all in the description below. And with that, let's get started. So perhaps the biggest reveal that came out of all this new information is X and Y's type chart, as revealed on PokemonXY.com. The type charts are nothing new, as they've long been used to show which types of Pokemon each type is effective against and not effective against. But this time, we finally get to see how the new fairy type fits into the mix. And it looks like the fairy type moves will be super effective against fighting, dragon, and dark types, while being ineffective against fire, poison, and steel types. Fairies will also be able to resist fighting, bug, and dark type moves and are completely immune to dragon type attacks. However, it is weak to poison and steel type moves. It's all pretty interesting and actually ties into one of the revelations of the new trailer, the first evolutions of the Kalos starters. Chespin evolves into Quilladin, Fennekin becomes Brexin, and Froakie evolves into Frogadier. The designs all look good, but we still don't know what their final evolution secondary type might be. However, we think their designs, names, and even the new type chart may hold some clues. Take Quilladin for instance. The name seems to be a portmanteau of Quill and Paladin. Of course Quill because he's covered in them, but the second half, Paladin, refers to a knight, who obviously wears steel armor. Now although we haven't seen him use any steel type moves, we have to wonder if his final evolution might be a grass slash steel type to fit the theme. Then there's Frogadier, which looks to be a portmanteau of Frog and Brigadier. Now Brigadier usually refers to a higher ranking military leader, and in this case seems to indicate Frogadier as a fighter, or rather an eventual water slash fighting type. And as an interesting bit of trivia, Brigadiers were also a non-commissioned rank in Napoleon's army. And Napoleon, as you might recall from history class, was a French military leader. And it just so happens that the new Kalos region is actually based on France. I told you it was interesting. Finally, there's Braxian. Now ever since we first saw Fennekin use sidekick moves, we wonder if his final evolution would be a fire slash sidekick type. Well, Braxian reinforces the idea even more with his use of a stick that's reminiscent of a wand when she uses Psy Shock. Unfortunately, its name doesn't yield any more clues as it's a portmanteau of Braes, or a way of cooking, and Vixen, which means a female fox. However, do you remember how he mentioned she uses a stick like a wand, I mean just mere seconds ago? That doesn't seem very much like a sidekick, does it? Well, what if Fennekin's final evolution isn't fire slash sidekick, but fire slash fairy? It would fit perfectly into the new type chart. After all, Fennekin's fire beats Chespin, Chespin's grass beats Froki, and Froki's water beats Fennekin. But add in the potential secondary types, and Froki's fighting beats Chespin's steel, while Chespin's steel beats Fennekin's fairy, and Fennekin's fairy beats Froki's fighting. It all makes sense! Now, if Fennekin's secondary type was sidekick instead, this balance wouldn't be possible, since it would be four times as effective against Chespin. And Chespin would only be able to resist sidekick, and wouldn't actually be super effective against Fennekin's final form. It's all conjecture in the end, but we think we have a pretty good case that this is how the Kalos starter's final evolutions will turn out. But that's not the only information that the new type chart revealed as it also shows which types are immune to certain status effects. And while some of them are old news, they're still worth pointing out. For example, fire types cannot be afflicted with a burn status while electric types can't be paralyzed. Other immunities and special abilities include the fact that grass types are immune to leech seed and powder or spore moves. Ice types cannot be frozen and aren't damaged during the hail condition. Poison types are immune to poisoning conditions, and they can even nullify toxic spikes unless they are also a flying type or have the levitate ability. In fact, flying types can't be affected by regular spikes either. And as always, ground types are immune to thunder wave and take no damage from sandstorms. Rock types are also immune to sandstorms, but they also get a special defense increase. Steel types are immune to sandstorms as well as poisons. Ghost types are also now not affected by moves that prevent fleeing from battle. Okay, that's enough about all these types and their special conditions. It's making my head spin. How about we talk about all the new Pokemon revealed in the trailer instead? First up are our two new fossil Pokemon, Tyrant and Amora. Tyrant is restored from the Jaw Fossil and is a rock slash dragon Pokemon. He has the ability Strong Jaw which powers up biting attacks. And by the way, it's hard to believe it took this long for us to get a T-Rex Pokemon. Amora, on the other hand, is restored from the Sail Fossil. It's a rock slash ice Pokemon with the ability Refrigerate. This new ability turns normal type moves into ice types. Next up is Furfru, who turns out to be the mysterious Pokemon that we discovered in the last trailer. This poodle-like Pokemon is actually one you can customize with different looks. These looks can be changed through grooming, and there seems to be a quite a number of different styles to choose from. Nintendo has shown off three already, but more will become available the more you groom it. However, if you stop grooming it for a few days, its fur will return to normal. The fur fur is a normal type Pokemon with the ability Fur Coat. This has all damage taken from physical attacks. It also can learn the new fairy type move called Baby Doll Eyes. This always allows the user to go first and will lower the opponent's attack stat. The new trailer also shows off how different gendered Pokemon will take on different forms. In the case of Mew Stick, this also affects which moves it can actually learn. The females are better at attacking, while the males are better at support moves. 
It's also a psychic Pokemon that can have either the ability Keen Eye, which prevents accuracy loss, or Infiltrator, which allows the Pokemon to ignore its opponent's barriers like Reflect or Safeguard. It also has a move called Miracle Eye, which allows future moves to hit regardless of evasion. Impressively, it will also allow psychic Pokemon to even hurt dark types. Moving on, Pyroar, the evolution of Lit Leo, also has different male and female forms, though this doesn't seem to affect anything other than their appearance. Which, by the way, is based on the gender differences of real lions. Like Lit Leo, Pyroar is a fire slash normal type and has the ability Rivalry or Unnerve. Rivalry allows moves to be slightly more powerful if the attack is against the same gender, but slightly less powerful if it's against the opposite gender whereas a nerve may make the opponent unable to eat its held berry. It can also learn Echoed Voice, a move that grows in power when it's used every turn. Interestingly, if multiple Pokemon use it during double or triple battles, it'll keep growing in power. Then there are the two new Mega Evolutions. First up is Mega Garchomp, which gains the Sand Force ability. This grants it immunity in a sandstorm and powers up rock, ground, and steel-type moves. The second Mega Evolution is actually another form of Mega Mewtwo, Mega Mewtwo X, which is exclusive to Pokemon X. It becomes a psychic slash fighting type while its attack stat grows immensely. The Mega Mewtwo we've seen up until now is officially Mega Mewtwo Y and is exclusive to Pokemon Y. And their respective Mega Stones are known as Mega Mewtwo Knight X and Mega Mewtwo Knight Y, so it seems we were right about the naming conventions of the Mega Stones. In addition to the new Pokemon, we learned a bit more about the trainers you'll be fighting. Specifically, the leaders of Team Flare, who are a group of five scientists. Celosia is the purple-haired one, Aliana in orange, Brioni in green, Mabel in blue, and the lone man is named Zerosic, and he appears to be the one in charge. Now interestingly, the female scientists appear to all be named after flowers of the same name, except for Mabel, which could be a variation on Maple. As for Zerosic, it appears to be based on Xerosis, which is the medical term for dry skin. Now we have no idea these names actually mean anything deeper. Could they be a hint of something story related? At any rate, it seems their goal is to change the world, but we still have no idea how they'll accomplish this. When we first met the Team Flare Grunt several trailers ago, we would have never guessed that they were led by scientists. This means that their goals could still somehow tie into our theories of genetic manipulation. Now there's not much more else to say about them other than the fact that each leader is wearing some form of futuristic eyewear. Maybe they use them to scan the genetic code of Pokemon? Or maybe it's just an unusual style of choice. We also learned of another new character, Diantha. She's a famous movie star and Pokemon trainer with plenty of potential. It seems like at various points throughout the game, you can both battle and trade with her. But could the fact that she's a movie star mean that we could see the return to Pokestar Studios from Black and White 2? The new trailer also gives us our first look at the trainer customization, and it's even deeper than we imagined. As it turns out, there are two types of stores, boutiques and salons. Boutiques allow you to change not only your clothes, but hats, shoes, and accessories as well. You can mix and match as you like, or choose some of the preset styles available. Whereas salons allow you to change your hairstyle and color. Each city will also have its own unique set of clothes and styles for you to choose from. But we wonder, will it be possible to customize your clothes beyond just picking the style? Can you maybe adjust the color of everything or even make your own Pokemon t-shirts like the ones Tierno wears? And could some of the classic outfits of past trainers be available in the game? These will all be amazing additions, but we'll have to wait to see. These styles also tie into the new PR video studio which allows you to make a 10 second film that can feature you and your Pokemon. You can choose expressions, poses, background music, and camera angles among even more options. Or you can choose one of the presets to make one quickly. These videos can then be shared over the PSS for anyone to see. All these videos can be shared on the Pokemon Global Link as well. The Global Link will have a mobile version for smartphones too. You can also look over your results on rating battles or even check out the world ranking for each of the battle formats. And there are 5 formats to choose from, single battle, double battle, triple battle, rotation battle, and special battle. The special battles are brand new and have their own rules changed every 3 months. The first one available will be a single battle where only Pokemon that debuted in X and Y can be used. This season will begin in late December of this year. And though we suspected as much, this confirms that all the previous battle types will appear again in X and Y. We even get a look at how they'll look in the game thanks to the trailer. Okay, we're almost done here, but there's still one more thing worth pointing out. In one of the new screenshots released, we get a good look at the fossil lab. Now what's interesting is that this person is behind a counter like this is a regular thing instead of being hidden away somewhere like in past games. And we can see the new Pokemon PC is nearby as well. Does this mean the fossil lab has some other kind of function too? Maybe you have to come here to restore Mega Stones. They are supposed to be ancient after all. And with that, we've been covered all we could dig up in the latest Pokemon trailer. But of course, if we missed anything, please let us know in the comments below. If you liked our analysis, please make sure to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at GameXplain. There are even super easy to click links in the description below. Thanks for watching, and make sure to keep an eye on GameXplain.com for more on Pokemon X and Pokemon Y and other things gaming too.